Oh wow. This is just fascinating. I don't believe what I'm seeing. Hey guys. Want to see what I'm looking at? I just received the craziest moth eggs ever. Take a look. Let me show you this a little bit closer. Hairy eggs? Have you seen such extremely hairy moth eggs before? Wow! They're already hatching? Yes, as soon as I received the eggs, small caterpillars immediately appeared from them. The small caterpillars seemed to be just as hairy as the eggs that they came from and had grey bodies with white stripes. Adorable. So now you're probably wondering, well Bart, that's very fascinating, so what species is it? The answer to this is, I don't know, I have no idea. It is a random species sent to me from the country of Cameroon in Africa, so this moment I have literally no clue what the species is going to be. Uh, it can be anything, but I think I have one idea because I have a lot of experience with insects and these eggs reminding me of uh, a type of, of gypsy moth uh, from the subfamily of Limantrinae, from the family of the Erebidae. And um, I gave them some random plants to see if they would eat anything and I was pretty lucky, because they do. Let's take a look. Now this is actually very challenging. Usually when I receive eggs of a moth species that I want to study, I will research their biology and food plants. However, these eggs are of a mysterious moth species, so I really had no clue what to expect or what food to give them. However, by randomly adding plants to their container, I was lucky. The caterpillars began to eat stinging nettle, willow leaves, bramble and oak tree. Within just a short time, they began to grow and shed their skins. Progressively, the caterpillars became bigger and bigger. They started becoming hairier and bigger. And when their size grew, so did their appetites. I still had no clue what this species was, although I did suspect it to be some type of tussock moth. Breeding a random species of moth is very difficult and a shot in the dark. I was lucky they were willing to eat some of the food plants that I found for them. After growing bigger and bigger, instead of grey, their hairs first turned rusty brown and later bright orange. Wow, look at that. These caterpillars are just beautiful. Our mystery species was growing well, although they grew very slowly and they took many months to grow. These caterpillars had mildly itching and urticating hairs. So. Their bright orange color is probably actually somewhat of a warning to any predator 
considering eating the poor little thing. One thing that I found funny is their fondness for walking circles on top of their containers. Whenever I opened them, just take a look at that. Although amusing, caterpillars have very poor eyesight and mainly rely on vibrations and smells. So they probably have no clue that they're actually walking in circles here. <laughs> are caterpillars dumb or just unaware? All jokes aside, everything seemed to be going well. I was almost getting happy with the results, but unfortunately in my life, <sighs> happiness does not come easy. Hello everyone. Um, today I have an update for you that is not so good. I just checked the container of the mystery species and Another caterpillar has died, so we only have two caterpillars left. And here we have our latest victim, the dead caterpillar. As you can see, this uh, clearly it is deader than that. It is basically loose skin at this point. So uh, I'm gonna throw this guy away since he's a risk of infection to the other caterpillars. The two that are still alive, that is. But I really hope the two other caterpillars make it. I really just want to want to see what species it is, boys. The good news is the two caterpillars are still alive. Although I'm not sure if this is good news. Because at this point I'm really just very pessimistic. Uh, I don't see this episode becoming a success. The only thing I can do is maybe rear two moths, which uh, sucks because that's a too low amount. Three was already too little, but two. And uh, I feel like maybe these are going to die too. I don't know if they are going to make it. Well, the two survivors, they did grow bigger. Just look at that. This is about the maximum size of one of our two survivors. What a beautiful caterpillar. I have mixed emotions. I'm very happy that two caterpillars survived, but I'm also very sad I could not save more of them. I was very nervous for the last caterpillar. Luckily, one day, I saw something cool happening in the container. Silk! Yay, this cutie is making a cocoon. What a relief that is. I'm glad that at least one caterpillar made it to the cocoon stage. It spent a few hours spinning, until finally it covered ex itself with a mixture of hairs and silk. Check out the close-up of the cocoon. They are very hairy. They incorporate their own body hair into the silk for extra protection. And now the waiting game begins.
What's up everyone? Uh, there's a strange update going on. I just checked how, uh, how the last caterpillar was doing. And inside the box I saw a moth. Turns out that uh, I forgotten to remove the cocoon in time. Because I assumed the second caterpillar was going to spin a cocoon quite soon and I could remove both of the cocoons. Turns out these cocoons hatch incredibly fast and one already turned into a moth while the second one is still a larva. That's incredible and now finally we can find out what a mystery moth is so let's finally take a look. Are you ready for the big moment? Let's show you a quick summary of everything we've been through. It seems a short amount of time but in reality it was about five months. Aww, so cute. Look at that. <laughs> Finally, I was able to determine the species. Apparently, it's a Melantria xanthospila. This is a type of tussock moth, Limantrinae. Very little is known about the life cycle in the wild. So my rearing actually contributes to our knowledge about these animals. I think I'm one of the first people who actually photographed and filmed all the life stages of this wonderful little insect. Its beauty was breathtaking. Just look at the cream yellow wings, fluffy body and legs, bunny-like antennae and delicate, almost embroidered patterns of orange, yellow and black. Sadly, these moths only live for a few days time. They have no functioning mouth uh, parts and cannot eat and are basically forced to starve. They only live for a few days for that reason, just to pair and lay some eggs. What was really interesting, that was uh, while the first individual was already a moth, the second individual was still in the caterpillar stage. It seemed to grow much slower, but also much bigger. It was my suspicion that it was a female. Females are much bigger than the males and take a longer time to develop. That would explain why the small male turn into adults faster than large females that need to accumulate more biomass. Tussock moths are an interesting group of moths, the Limantridae or under the family of Erebidae, and they are very common in the tropics and often have very hairy life stages. They can be specialists but also extremely polyphagous generalists and are of economic significance since some species feed on food crops or can act as defoliators in forest and agricultural areas. For example, they are related to the more commonly known and famous species such as the gypsy moth, Limantria dispar, or the vapor moths, genus Orgia. They usually have beautiful, colorful and hairy life stages as small fluffy adults. So, what about the second caterpillar? Is it going to be a female? Will it survive or die like its brothers and sisters? Let's find out. Woohoo, there we go, a cocoon, finally. At least two individuals made it to moths, I guess. This individual was much bigger than the first one. This time I opened the cocoon just to get some footage of the pupa. Let's see if it hatches well. The pupa can hatch really fast in about three weeks time. At least that's what our first meal did.
Yay, there she is. Let's grab her with a stick. Oh, and uh, please ignore the tiger moth walking around there. It's Sacalimorpha principalis, but I'm making a future video about this species. But you will just have to be patient and follow my channel to see them. I'm still busy breeding those right now. So for now we will just concentrate on the Melantria, since those are what this episode is really about. Anyways, as expected, the female was a whole lot bigger. She also had thinner antenna and a fatter abdomen. Just look at this absolute beauty. This species is reportedly found in Burundi, Cameroon, Democratic Republic of Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Ghana, Kenya, Nigeria, Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda and more places. And here they seem to feed on grasses, Aspilia, pine tree, Psychotria, and a lot more plants, such as the ones I gave them in captivity. In captivity I demonstrated that they could eat much more plants than those listed. So it's likely to be very polyphagous in the wild and more of a generalist feeder. Lastly, look at the female's butt, <laughs> or abdomen, I should say. Note the hairy brush at the tip of the abdomen. When she lays eggs, she uses these hairs to coat the eggs. That's why the eggs are so hairy. She, she can cover them with these defensive hairs as soon as they are laid. So what happens next uh, may look a little bit morbid. I pinned the moths when they died. Why? Well. The male and female were born too far apart for me to have a pairing. The female hatched a month after the first male. And by then, of course, he was already dead since he only lived for a few days. So I preserved them in the name of science. I will donate these specimens to the scientific museum collection where I work. However, there was one problem. I suck at pinning moths. So sadly, I kind of ruined the female. Oops. If any experienced people are watching this channel, please give me some tips because I am really terrible at this. Here are the two specimens, finally. The male looks not so bad, it's acceptable I guess. But the female? Ah, oh, she is ruined. What a waste. I will still save her though. It's for science. And that's it, we are at the end of this episode, thank you for watching. Subscribe and follow my channel to see more moth stories in the future. I have one important message for all of you. My channel is not supported by YouTube and entirely and permanently demonetized. When I make videos, I get absolutely nothing in return from YouTube. That is why I have to ask you, my dear viewer, to please consider supporting me financially. My channel is crowdfunded and contributions can be made via, via Patreon, LiberaPay and PayPal. Please read the links in the description of this video to find out more. My channel is one of the few channels that there are online that take the study of insects seriously and hopes to promote awareness about them and show people how beautiful and complex they are and gives free tips to aspiring breeders, entomologists and biologists. All the funds that I raise online from the donations I will use to upgrade my channel. I will use it to buy better filming equipment, cocoons and eggs of interesting species to enable to have me more free time that I need to film and edit videos and ultimately use it to benefit our knowledge of the environment 
and get more people involved in insect conservation. So sponsor me and my channel, donate and get more awesome content in return. And at the same time, it helps support my work that helps insects. See ya!